Hello, Keith Rucker here at businessmachinery.org. Guys, back to working on the metal planer today, and uh, we're gonna be working on our lubrication system, uh, at least getting started on that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it all done. In fact, I know I'm not because I don't have a pump in yet, uh, but I do wanna start working on getting some lines ran for the lube system before we start really putting this machine back together. Right now is when I have access to it before I put the table back on. Well, I can kind of slide it back and probably still work down here. It's just gonna be easier to do it before we even get to that point. So um, let me kind of zoom you in here, show you what we've already done. And from there, we're gonna start running some oil lines. So previously, in fact, before we even started scraping the table in, I took the time to actually drill some oil holes through the ways here in the very center of the machine and also took a die grinder and kind of put this little bow tie uh, pattern in here. Now, if you remember from that earlier episode, we talked about the way the table moves on this machine and on a full stroke, it's got an eight foot table, the bed is 10 feet long. On a full stroke, uh, the, the table goes back and there's only about six inches here in the center that really does not ever uh, become exposed potentially. Again, on the full stroke, the table will come back to almost here and it will come into almost about right in here. So this is really the only area that does not get exposed. So this is the area we put our lubrication system in uh, and this is the area that we'll be injecting the oil in. Now the idea is the oil is gonna come in a pressurized line and through this little hole it will disperse through this little bow tie pattern that we've got scratched in here. And that should lubricate the ways as they go back and forth. Now, most of the time, the machine will not be running on a full stroke. It might be only running on a partial stroke. So we'll have a bigger area in here that will uh, kind of be where it won't be covered up or won't become uncovered rather. Uh, but worst case scenario, this is kind of the only areas we got in here. I say that because we really don't want any of these um, scratched in real deep oil ways to become exposed. If they do, that just gives an opportunity for trash and stuff to get down into this, which can scratch up your ways and uh, really cause more damage than good. Now, the other thing I did is um, came in here and I had a small hole. I think it was about a, I think it's about an eighth or three sixteenths inch hole. I can't remember which one I drilled through there. But I came in and with a larger drill bit, a letter R drill bit actually, and drilled that in a little bit. We tapped this for 1 8 inch pipe fittings. And I got these elbow pieces in here. And these elbows actually go to a um, piece of uh, tubing. I think it was uh, 5 16 or 5 30 seconds. I'll, I'll verify that in a minute when I look at my tubing. Uh, but it's a, it's a brass tubing that we'll be running. And then each of these four points we'll be going to a uh, manifold where we'll have an individual line going to each individual point. Uh, now some people will wanna kind of piggyback their, their oil lines where they have a line that goes in here and a T that goes over to another place. Ideally, you wanna have one oil line going to one point because what will happen is if one of these points becomes somewhat obstructed, uh, the flow is gonna just take the path of least resistance, it's gonna go to the other one. By having just one tube going to each individual point, you should have constant pressure on there and that should hopefully be enough pressure to uh, push through any kind of blockage that may get in there. Uh, if, you, if you have multiple lines, again, one will get blocked up and it's really not gonna deliver oil to that point. I am gonna comment right here that this oil system that I'm putting in here is something new to this machine. It's not necessarily new to planers per se. This type of system was used on many planers that were made later. This machine was built originally in, I'm estimating in the 1890s. And at that time they just didn't have uh, forced lubrication systems. They didn't know as much about lubrication as we do now. So this is kind of a modern add-on or fairly modern type of an add-on. And I'm doing that just to improve the lubrication system on this machine. Now, what did the machine have originally for lubrication system? Let's show you what it is. So when the machine was new, what it had was these oilers that kind of bolted onto the end of the table. There's two middle mounting holes here and this little bracket here, there's actually, it's all dried up now, but there was 
a piece of felt in here. Uh, the felt comes out through the holes in the bottom, ideally. I really don't think it's packed the way it's supposed to be packed. You really would want those to be actually wiping on the ways. But you would uh, just squirt oil down into this oil cup. And as the machine went back and forth, it would wipe those ways. So it's actually a, a, um, a system that is used something very similar even today on lays. We have way wipers. And um, I haven't decided, I think I'm going to modify these or actually make something a little bit different. Same type principle where we have a felt wiper in there that will wipe oil on there. It'll have a reservoir here that we'll just put oil into. But one thing I want to incorporate into it is a actual rubber um, way wiper built into that as well so that that rubber kind of pushes any um, material that may be on the ways off to kind of help prevent them from getting up underneath it. It also kind of acts like a squeegee when you're coming back across that way to keep that oil uh, kind of in this area. So um, I'm, I've got to do a little bit of work on that. I may redesign these and do something a little bit different, but we, I am still definitely planning on having these, uh, some type of way wiper on the end of this uh, machine, the ways uh, that will lubricate it from the ends as well as from the new system in the center. This will not be a forced uh, lubrication system. Uh, I'm not going to say you couldn't do that, but because of the stroke on this and the tubing and and uh, all the piping that's involved, that would be kind of difficult. You'd have to have a um, some some flexible piping that moved back and forth with the table, which um, I just don't think I really want to fool with. So, uh, but I did want to kind of show you the original system there. So here's the game plan. This is a, a manifold uh, that's made by Bajour, B-I-J-U-R, who is the, the company that sells the uh, oil fittings and lubrication systems. They're the experts in this. And um, they had some really good resources up on their website that kind of helped me determine what I needed for this machine. Uh, but this is ba basically a manifold. There's four outputs on the top. There's two on the end, one on each end. One I will actually have the oil coming in. I'm only going to have four points. I'll put a plug in one of these. But in this manifold, we're going to screw in these little metering devices. And what this metering device is, is it does a couple of things. Number one, it's a backflow device. It keeps any oil from actually backing in. It's a one-way uh, delivery system. Uh, but you can purchase these metering devices where each time you put a squirt in through your lube system, it's metering how much oil is able to go through that, that port. Uh, and the cool thing about this is, is if you're working on a lathe that has many, many oiling points, you may want some areas to get more oil than other areas. You don't want everything to get oiled equally, uh, just depending on where it's going to. So you can actually purchase these so that you have different amounts of oil that is metered through these different lines. And of course you have one line going to each point. And uh, it all just kind of balances out in this manifold. So. You know, this one might get twice the amount of oil as this one for every shot that comes into it. So um, I'm going to be drilling some holes. I'm just going to mount this thing kind of right up here in the front. Uh, and then we'll be running some tubing into each one of these four um, uh, metering devices. That's the game plan. So with that, let's get started uh, getting this thing put together. This manifold takes a quarter inch uh, screw to hold it in. So I'm going to uh, kind of put this down here where I want it. I've got a uh, transfer punch here. It's a quarter inch transfer punch. I'm just gonna kind of put that in there. We're gonna get the first side set and then we will uh, do the second side. So that should give me a center punch hole to start with. This is going to be quarter 20 threads, so uh, we're going to be drilling this with a number 7 drill bit, uh, which is the drill size for a quarter 20 tap. This should be deep enough. We got a quarter 20 tap here. Uh, let's 
see if that holds deep enough. I may have to run a bottoming tap in there to get it where it'll tighten up all the way. And no, I think I'm gonna be good. So I am gonna go ahead and just kind of snug that in place. Uh, get back here where I can see. It needs to go up just a tad. Punch again. Loosen that up now and get it out of the way. And we will drill us a second hole right there. And there we go. Tighten both of those up. Very good, we got us a manifold mounted. So next I'm gonna put in my meters. And if you look real closely, there's an arrow on there. That's the direction of the oil flow. Also one side's kind of got a little um, bevel on it that fits down into the uh, bottom of that hole and kind of seals it in place. So I wanna go ahead and put these on in and uh, the top sides will just connect our oil pipe to these happen to be number ones. Like I said, I went to their website. I uh, read all their documentation at Bajor, and uh, it helped me determine which size fitting I needed for these particular ways, and it was based on the, um, the area of oil that was being covered. So I calculated on a full stroke of the machine, um, two inch wide way and I think like there was something else in there, but it, it went through and helped you determine how much oil flow you needed to properly lubricate that slide way. And then it told you which metering unit you needed to deliver that amount of oil. In this case, they're all doing basically the same thing. So they're all for uh, the same size meter. And I think that's good. All right, got all four of those mounted. So I've got my fitting here and we got the tubing. This is 530 seconds outside diameter. Um, I think this is copper, maybe brass. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's whatever I got from the company that sells the stuff, but this tube's got to come in here, come out of this. I need to get it to the inside frame uh, and instead of trying to go around and up underneath, I'm just going to drill a hole through here and uh, take it through there. I've actually got some other places, like right here, there's a hole and it goes to a piece of tubing. This actually goes down to oil that's bearing here. So they've already drilled holes in here for tubing for lubrication. Uh, so we're just going to kind of follow suit. Um, 530 seconds uh, is the tube size. I just went up one side, was at 1164, so I think was a drill bit size here. And uh, we're just gonna drill the hole completely through the casting. I'm gonna do it about right here. That should give me plenty of clearance. I've already done some measurements to figure out where I want it to come out on the inside. All right. And just verify that my tube goes through that. And it does. So um, let's see, I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of estimate how long this needs to be. I've got some extra tubing here, so I'm gonna cut this off a little bit long, make sure I don't run out of uh, space when I get down in there. And we will cut it to the length we need on the other end. So I just got a little tubing cutter here and we'll zip this around and cut our tubing. Take this uh, fitting out. There's a um, compression nut and a uh, ferrule that goes up in there that uh, puts all this on, on this end. 
So this all just slides up on my tubing. Put that compression nut on there. And when you tighten that in, it just wedges that ferrule in between the two, um, two bodies and it compresses in there and makes a nice tight seal. So uh, let me figure out about where my bend needs to be. This little spring thing here uh, just helps you keep it from kinking. I really need one about a size smaller, but uh, it will help when bending tubing to get a, a nice smooth bend. Put all this stuff on. Got my wrench here. Go ahead and tighten this up. And that's starting to tighten up real good in there now. We uh, probably got a good seal on it right there. That's good. Put my spring on here. I want to get a fairly tight bend in there without over bending anything. And then over here, we want to kind of come down and then onto that fitting right there. So that's going to be close. See, I want that cut off about right there. Just got a little deburring tool here that I'm going to run up in that end, make sure that we don't have it crunched over in there. Got a nice, good, clean opening. Put a cap on there. We will uh, put our ferrule in there. All right, so now that oil will come out of that meter. It will distribute the right amount up here to this. Um, once I get all my, my lines in here, I'm gonna put me some, some type of little bracket here to kind of make sure these tubes stay in place. Um, and we should be in good shape. All right, next one will be this one here. And we'll bring it right over. Let's take a quick look here at the plumbing now that we got all this done. Of course, the table will keep this covered up the vast majority of the time. Um, and we should have plenty of clearance. There's the rack that goes through here, but uh, we got plenty of clearance between there and where the bottom of that rack's gonna go through. Shouldn't have any issues there. Side to side, no issues. I do still wanna get some clamps. I'm gonna have to fabricate something up and just uh, put those in there just to keep these nice and tight. Uh, but I can I can get access to this once I get the table on. I don't have those worked up quite yet, but uh, we'll get them done. Now that I got all my oil lines ran, the last thing I need to do to the ways on the bottom of the table is to put some flaking in these. And the flaking, uh, I'm gonna use a special scraper. It's called a half moon flaker. It puts a little half moon scrape mark um, in the ways and basically it's just strictly for oil retention It's to help move oil around you do it after you've done your scraping and these will just kind of get some deeper marks in there specifically for the scraping so um, I don't think I've ever shown me using this tool before uh, but I'm gonna zoom you in here and kind of let you see how this thing works I don't know if you can see it or not but I do have marks on here uh, to show the extents of where I want to go I've also put lines at 45 degree angle across there to, to kind of give me a, a target to shoot for uh, to get these things evenly spaced. Now when using the flaker, it's a lot different than the scraper. You basically just push on it and it does the work. It's a totally different action 
than uh, a, a scraper. It's a different tool altogether, but it leaves that half moon pattern. You go pretty quick when you're doing this. So hopefully you can see this half moon flaking that I put in here. A lot of people see this on machines and say, oh, that machine's been scraped when they see the flaking. Um, and yeah, you're partially right. We do have, it has been uh, scraped or flaked in this case for oil retention, but this is nothing to do with getting the surface flat. Uh, this has nothing to do with what I really consider true scraping. This is kind of a finishing thing that you do. Uh, and you don't always do this, but when you want to have that good oil retention on ways, uh, it's good to go in there and flake those surfaces. And again, that's just a little bit deeper surface. It breaks up uh, the scraped surface that we already have, but it gives a, a nice deep pocket for that oil to ride in to help keep this thing lubricated. And that's what we're working on right now is lubrication. So to finish up this lubrication system, I do still need to get a oil pump in here to be pumping. Uh, Bajor makes and sells a pump that would uh, work fine on this. It's about seven, 800 bucks for a new one. Um, I do have someone that told me they thought they might have something that'll work. They were gonna be checking on that for me. I haven't heard back from them yet. So I'm kind of waiting uh, to find out on that before I decide to buy a brand new pump or not. If we can uh, take a pump off of a uh, a, an older machine, a used pump that's in good shape, I'll probably go that route, uh, but to be determined. But again, no problem, I can slide the table back, I can still have access to this uh, and be able to work on that later on. Uh, so that'll be the game plan there. I think we're about ready to go ahead and put the table over here. Before I do, I wanna go ahead and put some oil on these ways. This will be the first time I've actually uh, put any oil on them. And I've just got some uh, machine way oil here. And I'm just uh, going to put a nice little liberal coat down through here. And we'll run that back and forth a time or two. I'll run the table back and forth a time or two uh, before we uh, kind of distribute it evenly. home free. Well, there we go. I think that we are ready to start building the rest of this machine now. I uh, said that in my last planer video, but I remember we had a few more little things we need to get done before we uh, started uh, going up. And I think next on the list is we're going to start putting our uprights here, which is the parts that hold the planer. Uh, cutter tools and all that kind of stuff. There's, we've got a good bit of work still left to do to those uh, to get everything lined up and perfectly in here. But uh, fortunately, I've already done a lot of the scraping on that. So I think it's, uh, it should go a little bit quicker than what we've been working on so far. Uh, I've also got a few repairs in there I got to work on. Uh, so yeah, there's still some work to do, but we're getting much closer to getting this machine back in action, which I'm excited about. Guys, uh, that is going to be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, those comments as well as thumbs ups are appreciated as well. And we will catch you on the next video.